Nigga wanna see me fall Stephen Curry, how I ball Gosha garments and a white three on my body I'm a Nikon and my girl about a ten He would probably be control of other people but for that, we would need to access at least 40% of our brain's capacity. After control of ourselves and others, would come control of matter. But now we're entering into the realm of science fiction. Morgan Freeman is just the ultimate professor. For two reasons. The first, he's totally convinced about the theory because he's very aware of it. I, I, I didn't know before we met. He is uh, excited about it. So he was, it was a pleasure for him just to talk about it. And the second thing, he's such a good actor that everything he said, you believe it. <laughs> it's up to us to push the rules and laws and go from evolution to revolution. <laughs> the human mind is just like any other muscle in the body. If we called on it to do more, it would probably do more. I fantasize that what we can imagine we can do. Excuse me, sir. Yes. But what would happen if, for some reason, we ignore somebody unlocked 100% of the cerebral capacity? 100%? Yes. I have no idea. Uh, Luke and I have talked a lot about his research and how he's developed this story with various clinical psychologists and scientists, professors. But for me, I only wanted to be aware of what Luke had intended this character to be. I didn't want what she sees, what she's experiencing, to be muddled by anything that my character would know. The first step is access to yourself, you know, the entire control of your body. Then the second step is the control of the others. You know, when it's, it's not you, it's you, and I can control everyone. And the third one is the matter. And then the fourth one, what is the ultimate? And it was very interesting to imagine it. The knowledge. A lot of this film was really a very solitary experience. She loses the ability to empathize, to feel pain. So I would say the most fun scenes for me to shoot is really the first time that you see my character because it was really the only time that I was able to try to breathe the real humanity into her and kind of give a little bit of life or sort of imagine, kind of color this character before everything is stripped away. Life was given to us a billion years ago. What have we done with it? I always have the desire for this film to start to another place. So long, cowboy. And Taipei was perfect. Lucy. You have a villain who doesn't understand anything. You have the town, the buildings, the sea, the forest, you have the mountains, everything in, in 100 miles. And the people from Taipei are the most gentle people I've seen so far. And they're sweet like angels. And when you start the film, everybody, the French, the Americans, the Taiwanese, everybody say a pray. Hi, just a little explanation for you. Um, in Taiwan, when we do a first day of shooting, we usually have to pray to the gods. So these are all the things that uh, we give to the gods. And uh, later on, in about five minutes, you'll see a lot of people holding incense, and that's our way to show our respects to the gods. We shot in Taipei for about three weeks. I really loved filming in that city. I just loved being able to explore that city. And I think in some ways, just the fact that we were all so tired and jet lagged and out of our element really added to the kind of the disorientation of the character. But it's a very welcoming city. We really had a wonderful time exploring. Do you speak English? Yeah. The first few days, it's a little confusing because I'm in sick, speak only Korean. But I have also people from Taiwan who speak only Taiwanese and French who doesn't speak English and English who doesn't speak French. So I have basically three translators next to me and every time I say something, everybody's like, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Everybody was talking. It was very funny on the set. Learning's always a painful process. Like when you're little and your bones are growing and you ache all over. Can you believe I can remember the sound of my own bones growing? Action. It was wonderful working with Troy. 
He's a formidable co-star. We didn't speak the same language, but we could communicate very much with our expression. He's a very warm person. So even though we were doing scenes that were really violent and cold and brutal, he was lovely, lovely, and was always happy to be on set and also was wonderful to watch because he's so incredibly expressive. And I think he added a lot to this character that could just be seen probably as evil or bad. And he really fills out that character and makes it a very multifaceted. Luke's work is really what drew me to this project because the script was quite simple um, and while the ideas were complex, reading it, the scene descriptions were particularly involved. It, you know, I just had to kind of trust Luke's vision and fortunately I had his resume to really encourage me to collaborate with him. And so I remember meeting him and he was like, if you see what I'm seeing, you'll believe in it. Um, and so I just, you know, you kind of have to take a leap of faith. All of this knowledge, Lucy. I'm not even sure that mankind is ready for it. It might bring us only instability and chaos. Ignorance brings chaos, not knowledge. The way Scarlett talked the first time about the script, at this moment, for me, it was done. It was her for sure. Because she was excited for the real reason, which is the story. But then the second step for her was, now I have to play the part. And that's where it starts to be complicated. Because the Lucy at the beginning and the Lucy at the end, there is nothing in common. There's something happening to her, and I didn't want all of these characteristics to be completely stripped away so that it was just a kind of monotonous, blank performance. You have to kind of see the human behind the circumstance, and it was difficult to try to not have that be totally flat. Wow, it's really challenging to, to play. Everything you know today is 12%. How are you going to play when I'm going to ask you to play 25, 50, 70, 80, 90, 100? Because nothing that you can give will suit your state. And we did something very funny. Scarlett has it on her wall, which is 10%, 20, 30. You know, every 10%, what you can do with this percentage? What is your level of knowledge and, and possibilities? And that's, it was a very good guide and every morning she was looking to see which girl she has to play. And she was exceptional. I was blown away. For me, just to prepare for this film, I wanted to be in really good physical condition because I just wanted to make sure that this character looked capable. The audience should be able to think, okay, this girl can handle a gun. A lot of the movements that I do in character are, are with a lot of intention and purpose, and I wanted those movements to feel strong. So when you see how she stands, how she maneuvers, it's with a lot of inner strength. What I'm saying is that your theory is not a theory. I absorbed a large quantity of synthetic CPH4 that will allow me to use 100% of my cerebral capacity. Right now I'm at 28%, and what she wrote is true. Once the brain reaches 20%, it opens up and expands the rest. There are no more obstacles. They fall away like dominoes. I'm colonizing my own brain. It was a very, very amazing time that I spent with these guys. Sir? Yes? Has it been proved scientifically? Well, for the moment, it's just hypothesis. We mix uh, my world and your world, in fact, and, and how you react to that. Well, the more we speak, uh, the more I think that your world is like my world. But, uh, you know, creativity for a movie maker is probably more or less the same than uh, creativity for a researcher. What I find splendid was in this film, there are true facts. For instance, you're talking about the number of cells in the brain, the number of signals per, per second, uh, which are produced by one cell. This is true. But, of course, it's a fiction, and uh, what I like is that the more you are advancing in the field, the more it, it becomes a fiction. Firing guns all over the place, it's fantastic. We filmed at La Sorbonne, the most beautiful university in Paris. Sorbonne is one of the oldest universities in Paris, and you have all this great, great knowledge. You know, I, I stopped school very early, I make films. And now I'm making a film about knowledge and I'm just destroying their knowledge. I think in the walls we put more than 2,000 bullets, rounds, 2,000s of them everywhere. And I have this image of the first day when everything is clean and the last day, and you can't even recognize La Sorbonne. Do you understand English? Luke has 
written a script that represents humanity. Every character comes from a different origin in the film. Anything that I could have imagined the film to have looked like just from reading the script pale in comparison to the actual life that Luke breathed into this project. Action. Luke is a movie maker. And if you enjoy making movies, you'll enjoy Luke. Very impressive man. Writer, director. Last shot, Mr. Morgan. Very easygoing, great sense of humor. I think he could produce financially his films on his own, but I think he likes having someone with an exterior eye that can come in, give him points of view. I think we're a good team. The most interesting thing about working with Luke is that he's the cameraman, and I think he's a director that knows precisely every little atom on his frame. One more, just for fun. Le troisième boom, c'est la panique. He's a formidable type of character because he knows what he sees in his mind and wants that vision to be executed perfectly. And you can see that in the way that he operates the camera and how he speaks with myself and the other actors. And I appreciate that in a director. Isn't that the craziest thing? It's my baby, you know, I love it. So I want to try to do my best everywhere. I like to be very close to the actors. That's why I have the camera on shoulder and I don't cut. They appreciate that a lot because all this part before action is where they have to prep. And if they have to do that every 30 seconds, it's just exhausting for them. Especially with Scarlett, she is amazing. Every time she has scenes with emotion and it needs to come, everybody was there, but the only two where we're looking at each other, it was her and me. And you feel that she's ready. And you just want to be here for her. You just want to say, oh, she's ready, let's go. Where is she? I can feel the gravity. I can feel the rotation of the earth. ago, I thought about this idea about talking about intelligence, but I was not intelligent enough at the time. So it takes me 10 years to, <laughs> to write just one draft. Uh, but I want to play with that. I, I met a couple of scientists and I was amazed by what they said. We're using basically 10% of our brain capacity. The rest, we don't have access to it. And I was fascinated by that. What happened if we have 100% and what will be the logical step? Sir? Yes. And what will be the next stage? Well, the next stage would probably be control of other people. What would happen if we could use more of our brains? I'm gonna drive. No, this is not possible. This is a police car. Okay. It was very interesting to play with that. Do you always drive like that? I've never driven before. Great. Imagine what would happen if you could use 20%. I can feel every living thing. 30, 40, 50, 100. Imagine. And Luc Besson, bless his heart, imagines. You can unlock secrets that go beyond our universe. So it starts with a uh, lot of conversation with big scientists. Twelve of them were a uh, Nobel Peace Prize. And they are all of them in the ICM, the Institute for the, the Research about the, the Brain in Paris. Action! So I work a lot for years to try to find the right balance between what's real and what's fantasy and make the film enjoyable. 